Today for me is just a light recovery run, so I thought it'd be a good day for me to show kind of my half marathon recovery and stretching routine. So today is just light three miles, very slow pace, nice and even, just getting the muscles and the legs back and warmed up after you know doing 11 miles just a day ago and a lot of overtraining injuries start to pop up around these peak weeks of training i remember when i did my marathon three years ago i think it was like three weeks before i started to get some shin splints and things like that so it's very important to have a good recovery routine i'll show you guys what i do for my recovery and stretching and hopefully that can help out you with your training so I'm gonna start off with showing you guys my warm up for every run that I do. It doesn't matter if it's a speed run, uh, the long runs on weekends, or just a recovery run like today. I always do the same warm up routine and it always focuses on dynamic stretching rather than static stretching. So moving my body parts lightly rather than you know getting into some deep like hamstring stretches or things like that. Though there is one exception to that, and we'll talk about that after I get the dynamic stretching out of the way. Just like that, it's a quick little dynamic warm up that I do. Um, it just gets all of my leg muscles working, raises the heart rate a little bit, and then I'm ready for my run. Now, if I didn't have like an Achilles issue, I wouldn't really do any static stretching. Um, but I had a bad Achilles injury like a year ago, and I kind of have like chronic um, tendonitis in it, so I always need to stretch that out prior to actually going on my run. So all that I do for my calf stretches is just stretch each one out for 10 seconds on both sides, repeat that once more, and then I'll do a stretch on both of them for another 10 seconds. And that's all I do for my pre-run warm-up routine. Um, like I said, it takes maybe five or 10 minutes, um, but it definitely makes a big difference from just starting out cold and going for a run, especially in the winter when it is cold temperatures. We actually have a pretty nice day today, so it's not too bad. Um, but especially on those cold days, like it makes the huge difference that you warm up your muscles and all these things. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go get in my run real quick and then I'll talk about kind of what I'm doing after my runs um, as far as recovery goes from like some foam rolling to ice baths and things of that nature. So that recovery run's done. Just did just barely over three miles, 3.06. 7.42 pace, um, average heart rate around like 140. So like I said, these recovery runs really are great to build into your half marathon training schedule. Um, for me, I have two of these per week. So basically I do two days of speed work, two days of like recovery runs, and then one long run, which is on the weekends. Um, and it's really important to build in these recovery runs because even though you know I am going for a specific pace that I wanna get, I wanna get seven minutes per mile, I can't run that pace every single run and be pushing my body that hard every single time I go out and run because naturally you're gonna break down your body, especially if it's not something you're used to. You know, you need to build and build up to these, you know, these times and these mileages. You can't just go out every single run. So that was a big thing for me to learn when I put together this half marathon training plan. And so far, I mean, everything has gone really well. I keep my hard days hard, like on the speed days and the long run days, and I keep my easy days easy, like on today. I don't overstretch it. I just go what feels good. I want to take you guys through what I do after my runs, which is actually when I do my static stretching to loosen everything up and keep me fresh for that next run the next time it comes around. All right, and here's my post running static stretching routine. So like I said, I do that dynamic stretching before runs, static stretching afterwards. So for my static stretches, I do another calf slash Achilles stretch on both sides, hold that for 15 seconds. 
After that's done, I move on to some hamstring stretches and I hold those for 20 seconds each. I do this about two times. Then moving to like a hip slash back stretch. I don't know, it just feels good. I hold this for 15 seconds both sides. And then last but not least, hop into child's pose. So I do a child's pose that's kind of narrow with my legs and then I will stretch out and do a wider child's pose. Hold both of those for 20 seconds. And that's really all there is to my stretching routine. So I've showed you guys my stretching routine, basically dynamic stretching and warm up prior to running. And then after running, I'll do some static stretches to really loosen out those muscles and get them nice and stretched out. Now, another thing that I do, and this is not something that I do all the time, maybe once or twice a week, just depends on how I'm feeling, is going to be an ice bath. Now the general idea with ice bath is that it changes like the blood flow in your legs and can help promote better recovery time. There's, it's still questionable based on the studies how much of that help it actually makes, but I like to do it at least maybe once or twice a week. And you don't actually need to have it ice cold. You can actually just turn it on like the coldest setting. And they say if you do between like 50 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit and fill that up and sit in it for like eight to 10 minutes, that's gonna be just as good as if you actually had literal ice in the bath. So let me fill this up and then we'll jump in here for a sec. All right, so we have the bath full and you could throw ice in this if you wanted to, but it's kind of conflicting on like what the actual best temperature is. There's some studies that say like somewhere in between 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit is perfectly fine. Um, so we check the water. We're right at 56 degrees, so that's cold enough for me. Um, and then as far as how long you want to stay in, again, the studies are still kind of it's not super conclusive on what is the optimal time to be in an ice bath, whether it's like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. For me, I just like to do five minutes um, just cause five minutes is good, the cold sucks. Um, so I'm gonna hop in this tub, basically just watch some Netflix and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cold for five minutes. Then one more thing, you wanna make sure your legs and like your hips and everything's gonna be completely covered by the water. They say to try to get up to your chest if you can, but I mean, no one has bathtubs that big in their, in their house. You're gonna have to like go get a special bath for that. So I'm gonna hop in and uh, set five minutes and we'll get this, get this done. Make sure you have your towel close by too. Best to just do it all at once, so we're gonna do that. And I'm telling you, that is mighty, mighty cold. Just make sure you keep breathing. Five minutes, I'm gonna set the timer. So from my experience, like the first like two or so minutes suck really bad, but then kind of once you sit in here for like, you know, the three, four, five minutes, it's really not that bad anymore. That being said, it is still really cold. All right, so ice bath done, put on some pants so they can slowly warm back up. But I will say, every time that I do an ice bath, my legs feel really, really good right after. Um, I don't know, they just feel like a brand new set of legs almost. And again, it's probably purely a placebo effect, but I like it. It's a good part of recovery. I'll generally only do ice baths after like hard days of training, like after, you know, the long runs on the weekends or after speed days. And another thing that I do also, this is another kind of optional thing. And the last thing is foam rolling. So I do foam rolling on like specific muscle parts. There's three main ones that I'll do. I'll do a quad, I'll do a hamstring, and then I will do a calf roll out too. Foam rolling I really only do if I feel like my legs are super sore. So like after speed training days especially, my legs and hamstrings and quads will normally be pretty sore. So I'll definitely foam roll them out then. Um, but this isn't something I do every single day. It's, you know, maybe, maybe three times a week um, after a hard workout. And that's kind of like the same cadence as the ice bath.
So I'll show you the three foam rollings that I'll do. First up will be my hamstring. Um, and what I do for foam rolling is instead of just going, you know, back and forth and doing this a bunch of times, what I do is actually sit on the foam roll, roll it to a spot that's sore, and then I'll, I'll sit it on that muscle part for like 10 seconds. And what that does is help release the tension in the muscle. You know, when you're just going back and forth, you're not really getting targeted tension on that muscle that you're trying to hit. So like if my hamstrings are sore, roll it, pause for 10 seconds. Then I'm gonna go move to the next spot, pause for 10 seconds. Then I go to another sore pot, pause for 10 seconds, and so on and so forth. And then I do that same exact thing for the quads. Just flip it over. Generally, I'll start up at the hip. And then if it's sore up at the hip, pause for 10 seconds, then roll down, pause for 10 seconds, roll down, pause for 10 seconds, so on and so forth. And then the last one I do is just for my calves. So hold it out here and hold it on that sore spot. If it's um, extra sore or if you want more weight on it, you can flip your leg over to get some extra pressure on that calf muscle. And then here again, my calves are actually pretty sore right now, so this is good. And you just pause it for 10 seconds and keep going. So yeah, that's my basic kind of warm up, stretching, injury prevention routine. So just to do a quick recap, um, one is dynamic stretching before every single run, you know, it takes about five, 10 minutes, get that heart rate up, get the muscles moving and things of that nature. And then I do one stretch on my calves and Achilles just because I've had some issues with them in the past. Then right after the run or sometime after the run, I try to do it right after, I'll do some static stretches with stretching out my hamstrings. Um, I'll do the calf and Achilles stretches again. And then I will also do kind of on the hip and back stretches. Then the two optional things that I do, I don't do these every day, but number one is gonna be an ice bath. So I'll go and just set the bathtub, get it around 55 degrees Fahrenheit, sit in there for five minutes, and then your legs feel really, really fresh afterwards. Again, only really use that for hard, after hard workouts. So, you know, after speed work or after the long runs on weekends. And then the fourth thing that I do is just some foam rolling. Again, just for, you know, after harder workouts or if I'm having some like targeted soreness that I kind of want to break up, I'll bust the foam roller up and do that. So that is kind of my warm up stretching injury prevention routine. And so far it's working out pretty good for me. Um, obviously I'm sure there's plenty of different variations, but hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on things that you can incorporate into your routine. And if you have some things that you have tried and that you really like that maybe I could incorporate, leave them down in the comments below. That is gonna wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. This is the peak week of training, only I think three weeks out for this half marathon. I'm ready to get after it. See you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.